Are you overwhelmed with placing various features on your homestead land? Don't fear, because in this video, I've got a checklist for you that will take your homestead land design to another level. Let's go. Water sources. Everyone who cultivates land knows that water is the most important source. You need to know where the water flows to account for its excess or its scarcity. For example, if the water accumulates in certain point, you would want to avoid placing structures there unless you are confident you can divert the water somewhere else. Equally, if you recognize a place where it's too dry to cultivate something you want or to graze animals, you would want to regenerate the landscape first by implementing techniques to slow the water down and spread it where it needs to be. You may say, well, this is irrelevant to me. I don't have any springs or any ponds or any water features. And I say that may be the case, but the water flows when it actually rains. So rainwater flows are the ones we can take advantage of. You may not see it at the first glance, but when you look more closely, you may notice signs of water washing out the soil in various degrees. You need to consider then if the water flowing in a certain direction is advantageous to you or not. You can also divert the water to a pond. Everything depends on your topography, but it's a good idea to save money and energy on water pumps and use natural gravity force whenever we can. Here's an example of water flows on our property and how we took advantage of that. The blue arrows represent the direction of water flows. The existing culvert pipe was transferring rainwater from the road to our land causing erosion. Now the water travels to irrigation pond without disturbing the soil. We use pipes and diversion drains to direct the water to earth storages such as swales and ponds, as well as rainwater tanks. Secondly, consider the most convenient access points around your property. It should be easy to get to your garden, animal housing, orchards, pastures and woodland if applicable. Just because there was an existing access point to your property, it doesn't mean you should use it if there is a better place to create driveways, tracks and pathways. Everything will depend on your frequency of visits to certain areas. Garden should be as close to your home as possible. You can also place housing for smaller animals close to your home, such as chickens, rabbit and ducks. A small orchard could be integrated near a garden if shading is necessary or separately from veggie patch, but they should be in close proximity to your home. Further away, you can have pastures with trees and shrubs intercropped for animals to graze on. You can have larger woodlot further from home that you would only visit once or twice a year. I would place garden beds on contour so your beds get adequate amount of water when it rains as the water flows at 90 degree to a contour line. And if saving space is a key to you, I would install the keyhole beds. Next, I would introduce smart features. Tree wind breaks can be positioned in areas that are affected by strong unwanted cold or hot winds. You can decide whether you need to put evergreen or deciduous trees and shrubs. I would plant evergreen in areas that I want to be protected for the whole year. On the other hand, deciduous trees can give me a shade in summer, but in winter they would allow sunshine to pass through. Next, we've got sun traps. This is for those who have chills in winter when stepping outside their home. So you can create windbreak in the shape of a horseshoe around your house, your gardens, animal housing, wherever you need that. Next, we've got wind tunnels. You can create a passageway for wind that you want, for example, for cool summer wind to breeze around your home. Next, we've got water masses. You can install a pond near a house as it modifies climate, stabilizes temperature, reflects heat and light. The only requisite would be to have a mild slope up to 12 degrees and clay soil or a liner. Next, we've got the glass house. If you don't have one, I'd consider building one from recycled materials, even if your winter isn't severe, and I will explain why. You can attach it to the house so it faces the sunny side, so it gives you free warmth in chiller days. To overcome boiling hot temperature in summer, plant deciduous vine next to it so it gets covered. This way, when the leaves drops, the greenhouse will be exposed in winter months. The reason why you would want a greenhouse, even if you can still grow veggies in winter, 
is that you can grow your own tropical species and fruits, different spices, which are otherwise sourced from other countries. Imagine coffee, tea, banana, avocado, cinnamon, vanilla, turmeric, and many other species at your doorstep. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you have found this checklist inspiring. Comment down below if you're planning to implement some new features on your land in 2023. I will also respond if you have some specific questions to your site. Also hit the like button if you have found this useful and consider subscribing to my channel. I will really appreciate it.